In this video I'm going to look at the nitration of benzene. So we'll start with the overall equation for the reaction. So benzene is C6H6 and it's reacting with nitric acid HNO3 and that would produce C6H5NO2 and H2O. Now the conditions for this reaction, you need a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst and it needs to be at about 55 degrees Celsius. So you can see I've added some extra detail onto the board now. We've got the name of the product, nitrobenzene, in orange there. And I've written it again in a more displayed sort of formula. So you can see the benzene ring now and you can see more clearly the structure of the nitrobenzene product. Now a little bit of sort of terminology for you. The type of substitution that's taking place is what we call mono substitution. So just remember there's a hydrogen at each corner of this benzene ring. One of those hydrogens, or this one in the diagram that I've drawn, this hydrogen is going to be substituted with the NO2 part of that. We'll go into the mechanism in a moment. So we've taken an H off and put an NO2 group on. And because that's only happened in one position, this is known as mono substitution. Now, that brings us nicely to this chosen temperature. If you have it too hot, then you run the risk of what's known as poly substitution. So in effect, you get more than one nitro group substituting onto the ring. And if you think of the substance TNT, so the TN stands for trinitro. Um, I'll draw it up in a moment what TNT looks like. But basically, if you have the temperature too hot, you run the risk of producing ex explosive products. And obviously, you don't want that. So you can see there now I've drawn up too hot, you get poly substitution. There's an example of a, a trinitro substituted um, benzene ring and boom, it would explode or it's more likely to explode. So you definitely don't want that. So we'll go into the mechanism now. The mechanism is effectively split into three parts. So part one, and this is often a part that students forget because there's no curly arrows in it, I guess. So part one is the formation of the electrophile. And I've just written in red there just the definition. An electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. So we have our nitric acid, HNO3. It's effectively it's this concentrated nitric acid. And we need to bring into play the concentrated sulfuric acid that we wrote on the conditions part of the first board. So these two acids are going to react together and produce three products, one of which, the NO2+, plus, this is the electrophile. I'll write up in a moment what that's called. So we've got um, NO2 plus, we've got an HSO4 minus ion. We're going to come back to that in a bit. And we also make a water molecule. So you can see I've added the extra detail there. The two acids are normally referred to as the nitrating mixture. So that's those two concentrated acids. And the electrophile, the NO2 plus ion, is what we call the nitronium ion. The second part of the mechanism is what's referred to as the electrophilic attack. So this is the electrophile that's just been produced in the first stage is going to attack this benzene ring. So if we think about the structure of benzene, this circle represents um, the pi electron cloud or the delocalized electron cloud. So we've got six delocalized electrons circling around here. Obviously electrons are negatively charged and they are therefore going to be attracted to this positively charged electrophile. And so we show that with a curly arrow. 
So this shows the movement of a pair of electrons from the cloud, not from the carbon-carbon bond, from the cloud to the nitrogen. Now this is going to produce this rather lovely looking um, intermediate uh, which is quite unstable so that's going to quickly change into something else which I'll show you in a moment. We just want to talk a little bit about um, some rules here when it comes to the exam. So we have lost two electrons from here so there are now four electrons in this partial electron cloud. Now the rule is you must cover well, I always say to my students, make sure this covers five carbons. So you can see it's, it's a bit like a horseshoe. Five carbon atoms must be covered. There's four electrons in there, not six. The two electrons that have come out are here. That's them there. So I'm now going to attempt to explain where the positive charge has come from. So we've got the situation before the pair of electrons is left, if we think of it as sort of dot and cross diagram, um, if we think about this carbon is this one here, that's bonded to a hydrogen, which isn't shown obviously, and two carbons. So the red circles, the red dots, represent three of those, that carbon's four outer electrons. The fourth one is in the pi electron cloud. Now remember, each carbon, each of these six carbons, provides one of its four electrons to the pi electron cloud through those uh, the overlap of those p orbital electrons. So effectively this green and red electron pair are coming out of the ring. Okay, so that takes us to this situation here which is effectively what we've got there. So you can see this carbon here still has all four of its electrons okay so it owned that before it still got it so yes two electrons have come out of the cloud but this carbon still it basically has ownership of that electron it's in this bond now the green one let's say has come from that carbon there well that's completely gone from the situation so effectively the, the benzene ring has lost one electron um, and so we get this positive charge. I hope that made sense. So if we pick up the mechanism again now, I did say when I drew this on the board that it was unstable, it's an intermediate, it's not going to last for very long. To stabilise itself, what it does is it basically sacrifices this hydrogen and the way it does that is the pair of electrons in that bond are sent back in to reform the pi electron cloud. So I'll just draw up what the uh, product of that, of that would look like. So you can see there, bottom right hand corner, we have now reformed the pi electron cloud. So we've got all six electrons back in there now because of these this pair of electrons going back in. That effectively has um, sort of ejected this hydrogen from the ring but it, because it doesn't have any electrons anymore, it is in the form of an H plus ion. So I said at the start I would come back to this HSO4 minus ion, and it's time for that now. So we've just produced the H plus ion, as you've seen in the previous slide, and it is going to react with the HSO4 minus ion, which was produced in step one when that nitronium ion was formed, and I'm sure you can see straight away what's the product of that going to be. It's obviously going to be H2SO4. So we've reformed sulfuric acid. So it's been used but then reformed. And hence it is a catalyst. The name of the mechanism is written up there. Electrophilic because it involves an electrophile. Substitution because the hydrogen on the benzene ring is substituted by the electrophile. Can you please make sure that you spell this correctly? It really makes me weep when I mark students' work and they get the mechanism completely right, quite a complicated thing to do, and then they go and spell electrophilic wrong because they put two L's there. So don't do that.
Now, obviously in the exam, they're not going to be friendly and just ask you to repeat the mechanism that's in your notes. Every student in the country is going to have what you've just seen there, I would imagine. So they're going to give you a slightly more complicated looking um, molecule. So we've got this, these methyl groups here at positions um, 1, 2, 3. So it would be 1, 3 dimethyl benzene. And you can see there it's it's been reacted with nitric and sulfuric acid. So hopefully straight away you think, yep, yeah, that's the nitrating mixture. I know what's going to happen here. So you just apply just what you've seen. And obviously the product is going to be provided it's around about 50 degrees C. We are going to get mononitration occurring. So you can choose, let's put it up there. You're going to get that and obviously the other product is a water molecule.